Hello, David Zaritsky for James Bond Lifestyle Video Podcast. Welcome back. You can think of this video podcast as part two to our Skyfall Jacket video, which seems to be a very popular one. Now, at the end of that last podcast, there was a bit of a tease. I was describing this little beauty right here, the peacoat that James Bond is seen wearing in Skyfall that you actually see in the trailers. But I didn't mention the brand name. Of course, all of you astute clothing detectives out there found out very quickly that it's Billy Reed. Probably from the leather accents, from the lapel, it wasn't that hard. And within probably 24 hours of the video podcast, the Billy Reed name was splashed all about. But then people realized how difficult it was to find this. And then we also found out, sure enough, the Billy Reed company has humans behind it. Individuals that are Bond fans as well. And, well, less than a week later, there's a short special edition, 150 of these jackets being made. But there's a story behind this. There's a pretty interesting story about how Billy Reed, the corporation, was engaged. And what were they engaged for? And what did they create? And why did they create it? But you know something? I think what we need to do is go to them. That's right. We're going to leave the confines of the collection, leave the jacket behind, and head to New York City to get to the bottom of this story. Well, we're here on the streets of New York, actually on Bond Street. I mean, how's that for destiny? I mean, this store was made to be here, Bond Street no less. So we're going to go inside Billy Reed, meet some of the individuals, and really get down to brass tacks about this entire story and how this peacoat became part of the James Bond lore of wardrobe. Let's take a look. Nice to meet you. You too. Very cool. I'm very excited for our interview. Thank you. We are extremely excited. We're obviously here inside the Billy Reese store with nobody than other than Grayson Knight, store director, who's going to be going over the history, lore, the mythology of this Pico. Absolutely. And the explosion around it. So for why sure. don't we uh, find a place and get underway? Sounds good. First things first, let's grab a drink. A drink. All right. Okay then. <laughs> Look at this. Thank you. It's a little early, but it's never too early. Cheers. Cheers Thank you very much. Absolutely. You know, this is amazing. You walk in the store and you immediately get the customer experience. Let me just describe for those of you that aren't here smelling this incredible bourbon so early in the morning. Um, this is a very Bond-esque environment. I mean, they created a, a men's lounge you immediately feel comfortable in. It's brick face. It, 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 it feels manly. There's dark wood. There's comfortable seating. And yes, delicious bourbon. So everything helps. But we're here for a reason, as you know. A lot of uh, avid people within the first three days of our first video podcast, we had 3,000 unique hits. Um, we've had 10,000 people actually visiting the James Bond Lifestyle video podcast wow. just to see this peacock. I mean, it's, it's gone viral. So we want to get into the lore and the history of it. Um, I've got to ask you, though, first, the brand. I mean, Billy Reed. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't know that there was a Billy Reed in existence well before this peacoat. So can you tell us a little bit about the, the brand itself? Absolutely. Billy Reed is a designer based out of uh, Florence, Alabama. And we have eight brick-and-mortar locations. Um, this is the only one in New York up in the north. But then we have Dallas, Houston, Austin, which we just recently opened. We have Charleston, South Carolina, and Nashville. And then our flagship is in Florence, Alabama, and Atlanta, which we opened this year as well. So it's just uh, gone very, very well. Billy uh, won the CFDA Menswear Designer of the Year this year, and he won Best New Menswear Designer in 2010, along with GQ's Best New Designer. So just really uh, coming about, um, we're doing a lot of fittings for Boardwalk Empire. Our stuff is featured in the Bond movie as well, and so a lot of gentleman hype type stuff, which we like. Fantastic. We like yeah. that too. Absolutely. Like that too. Okay, cool. 
So clearly there is a cadence, there's a, there's a chronology to this story. So, you know, tell me, how did it begin? Well, the Bond 23 uh, stylist contacted um, our PR to find out what exactly um, was going on with this Pico because uh, Daniel, uh, Craig himself, found it in uh, Nashville. Um, just uh, fell in love with it and some of our uh, clothes as well, and along with another jacket, which we'll get into. Um, and then they contacted us to try and get you know, more for the movie, and so we were thinking that this coat would be all in the movie, everyone would be wearing the coat, Right. but lo and behold, it was actually just for Daniel Craig himself. That's amazing. So from, from what I hear tell from, uh, from your corporate executives as well, there were 20 coats in all. Yes. There was, and I want to get this straight, there were 14 mediums. They were probably for the hero shots. Yep. They wanted a, a little bit tight fitting. So Daniel Craig, just as a reminder, same size as me, 40 regular. Um, he's got a slightly tinier Ooh. waist. Screw him. Um, <laughs> but they wanted it probably very fitted, and Daniel Craig likes his clothes fitted, but then a couple large probably for hero movements and Absolutely, like just that. for the uh, more action-oriented shots where he's moving around or something's going on where he uh, needs a little more movement. Right. So, which the large isn't a bad fit, but the medium is definitely Daniel Craig suave. Right, uh, right. <laughs> He's got to have that Daniel Craig suave. Absolutely. And and there are a lot of speculation right now out there uh, on the internet around. Okay, so clearly you guys were sworn to secrecy and had to sign reams and reams of contracts, but that's not the case. Not at all. Not at all. They just uh, Daniel Craig just believed in the brand so much and uh, knows what he likes. It just ended up working out to where. We didn't really have to be sworn in any secrecy. So. That's amazing to me. I mean, you hear so many different licensees, but interestingly enough, Billy Reed, and, and this is very fortunate. So you you talked about the uh, you know the PR, the the manna from heaven of this type of marketing that's viral. Uh, Billy Reed didn't have to pay anything incremental like Heineken does or Omega right. does. Um, they are one of those brands like you know Zara and Barber that just happen to be extremely fortunate to be seen in the movie, but. Who could have known in such a prevalent way? Right, absolutely. So, so tell me. I mean, I'm sure this has been the talk of the offices. You find out the jackets, you see the trailer, and things start exploding. How much excitement was there? Well, in the brand alone, there's a few nerds. Um, <laughs> us especially, um, we ended up lighting the fire under some other people, and uh, really letting people know that this was a very fortunate and awesome thing that they were using our, you know, coat in the movie. And so it just kind of goes from there, and then the you know, company finds out, people in the company, and then uh, then it goes public yeah. as well. And then, you know, uh, Bond Lifestyle, people find out as well. More nerds yeah, get a hold of it. it. More That's nerds right. get a hold of it, not just us. So it ends up working out very well. And I've, I'm a huge Bond fan myself. I've been watching it since I uh, was a baby with my dad, and all That's the way great. up until Daniel Craig now. So Yeah, it's uh, passed down from generation, and, and so will these coats. I mean, you know, it's, it's interesting how the original line was made under what you call the heirloom. Um, so many people uh, have really started to dip their toes in the water because it's a Bond coat. They say, you know something, I wouldn't normally spend seven, eight hundred dollars on a coat. Um, those of you who have seen our podcast on Tom Ford clearly know there are those that will spend that and much more. But this is a piece that can be handed down from generation and it has that bond lore as well. One thing that you should know as a representative of Billy Reed is that um, there were a series of individuals that saw the trailer and couldn't see that much but immediately started to identify, that's a very strange lapel and do I see a hint of leather and literally started combing the internet and there was one very industrious uh, detective, if you will, that's also a geek, who discovered that it was Billy Reed um, and kept it very quiet because we knew it was an older model. Uh, there was no way other than eBay that you could find them, so the hunt was on. Um, I was lucky enough to find one on eBay. It was an extra large. I had to get it fitted down to a medium, which right. was a little di difficult, but I did use your tailor Absolutely. up the street, which was great. But then magic happened. I mean, we got in touch with Graham, and, you know, when we got in touch with Graham, what, what was... I mean, what was the reaction of everybody here that you had all these rabid, not even avid, rabid Bond fans wanting the coat? Right, well, it was, uh, it was very exciting, but also um, very peculiar in a way, because I, yeah. I had never come across something like that uh, in the business before, in hospitality and or retail, and to find that people wanted this coat, not only where could they find it, but reissued as well. And the fact that it was uh, being reissued was, it, it's just crazy. It's Has Billy Reed ever done that before? Have they really issued not, something? No, well, we have in a way because of how it's maybe sold right. in the store and whatnot, but then there's always a few tweaks and changes to it. But something that's actually like 100% reproduced the way it is, I haven't seen that before necessarily. 
um, and my production people could correct me if yeah. I'm wrong. Um, but this is uh, unusual and awesome all at the same time as well. So awesome, and, and I remember there were about two or three days. I was um, obviously talked to Graham right away, and you know he and I talked about mm -hmm. let's be very transparent. You know the the PR and marketing aspect to this. You know creating a story around this, both virally through the video and, and on a different thread. So you know style forum and um, you know. Uh, my gosh, so many different threads have started to carry this. Bated breath, wondering, is, is Italy, will Billy Reed be able to reproduce this? And there were three days where there weren't a lot of fingernails left, and then suddenly Graham called me and said, we're ready. We're going to be doing a yeah. limited edition, very limited, of 150 pieces. Mm -hmm. And that's not 150 mediums and 150 larges. That's 150 across the entire spectrum. From here tell, there are one or two sizes that are almost sold out, and probably by the time this podcast airs, Maybe so. Uh, very excited. Yeah, for sure. Now there is a legend that is filled with truth about two other jackets, which a lot of people out there are obviously very excited to get their pea coats. And by the way, um, Billy Reed is trying to get them for us even before the movie debuts at the beginning of November. So let's cross our fingers on that. But besides the pea coat, there were two other jackets in the story. Tell us about that. So the two other jackets, um, one of them being our quail jacket. It was actually more of our like sportier outerwear jacket, um, literally actually a functioning quail jacket, so it could be used for hunting as well, and it's uh, wax cotton. So mm. it's got um, functionality to be outside, you can be indoors with it, buttons up very nice, and that trim around the waist, so it's also, you know, you can rock it with a shirt and a tie, right. so you could dress it up as well. But um, Daniel Craig found that jacket in Nashville, in our Nashville location, uh, in 2008, November. Um, right after Nashville it opened and fell in love with that jacket and that was one of the other jackets that he wanted but we weren't able to produce it because of the material and not getting enough in time. Uh, okay. So the second jacket being our officer's coat which actually I personally sent one of those out from Nashville to their stylist for um, their production used to see if this is something they could use and they loved it and it came in a heather gray um, hmm. with a leather cowhide trim in it and then we also had a green one very dark green with a huge pleat in the back, beautiful officer's coat, traditional like German military style. And um, we couldn't get either of them in time um, and or get that fabric again. So, Pico, lo and behold, is what we ended up going That's with, or fantastic. what they ended up going with. So, But the uh, officer's coat and the uh, quail jacket are um, both staples in our uh, collection as well. And we'll, we'll redo them uh, again. The quail jacket's actually going to be in our stores this fall. Right. So um, it's already on the website for pre-order. Oh, so fantastic. Bond fans, check yeah. it out. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's interesting that you say that. So there is a whole underground contingency that collect, and this is going to even sound crazier than the Bond thing, uh, clothes that Daniel Craig wears. Yeah. And so, you know, when um, the, uh, the the girl with the dragon tattoo came out, you know, Save Khaki down the road became right. incredibly popular. I mean, again, rabid Bond fans and Daniel Craig fans. So um, that coat was a question of whether people can right. get that again. And of course, you know, another brand replaced them in the movie and then the, the officer's trench coat was again replaced by another brand. But that would have been amazing that if we could have all four of those jackets with uh, the Billy Reed name. Absolutely. Very exciting. And uh, if you're ever uh, hunting on eBay or you're looking around, we did do the quail jacket last year, but it was in a green corduroy. Uh, and it has wax cotton on the inside. Okay. So, but this one that's we're reissuing this fall is all wax cotton. And this is um, accurate to the one that Daniel Craig picked up in 2008. Mm -hmm. Sure it's It's amazing. Yeah. Does, it, does it surprise you personally that uh, an actor, now an actor has a lot of influence on script and obviously, you know, uh, the timing of a picture, the, the theme of a picture, but the clothes. I mean, he has had a lot of influence on the movies he's done. Does it surprise you? Um, it does and it doesn't because of what I, I don't know Daniel personally myself. I think I I used to be in the restaurant. So business, he's not so. coming today is no. what you're saying. <laughs> Maybe in just a little bit. Okay. Um, I have waited on him actually um, before at a restaurant and a um, long time ago when I was uh, just a server. But um, How did he tip? Very okay, well. All right, so, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be terrible. He, he takes care of us. Right. Um, so, but you know what I get from him is that he is very, very um, detail oriented, and mm -hmm. he really, really pays attention to what he's wearing, what he wants to wear, even if it's you know in a movie role. And I think the Bond roles allow him to kind of be the ultimate guy, absolutely, and just really kind of let him be what he wants to be and who he already is with how he's dressed and how he is perceived, you know, to his audience. Right. So I think that that makes a big difference as well because that's, um, 
you know, it goes along the lines with us as like a lifestyle brand. It's a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. And and again, it's it's this very Bond-esque right. lifestyle. We were so happy to see. I mean, there's been some, look, there's been some branding with Bond that kind of falls outside of the Bond-esque kind of view, if you will. I mean, Omega fits a very good person right. and, and clearly Billy Reed. So I, I will have to say, for those of you watching this that are anywhere near any of those stores, that Grayson mentioned, or certainly the New York store, please stop in. There's been a wonderful side effect, um, and I don't know if Graham um, update, updated you on this, but uh, basically people have gone to the Billy Reed online flagship mm -hmm. store to order it and have said, oh, I like that Hanley, I like that shirt, and suddenly the coffers get larger. So Absolutely. we're so very happy for the brand. We're, we're so very happy that all of us could acquire this jacket because it's very difficult for us clothing bond uh, detectives, if you will, to find something before the movie.